I just want to welcome everybody today in the name of Jesus Christ as we come together to worship him and to um, feel his spirit with us as we uh, attend to the music and the words of this hour. Gracious and eternal not Heavenly yet. Father. Not you yet, Barry. What? It's not you yet. It's not me yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I just love the, the words of that prelude music. And I do feel indeed that it is a invitation to worship. And so we'll continue now with our opening hymn, Great and Marvelous Are Thy Works. And then the invocation by Larry.
Most gracious and eternal Heavenly Father, we come before thee this morning in thanksgiving of our many blessings and for the opportunity we have to worship you. We know, Father, that uh, you do provide us with all those bountiful blessings, and for those things we thank thee. We ask that your spirit might be with us this morning in our worship service, that uh, we might truly feel that spirit within us. For these things we ask in the name of your Son. Jesus the Christ. Amen. Soften my heart, Lord. Soften my heart. From all indeed. I've lit a candle for peace today, and I wanted to start by um, acknowledging that this past Tuesday, 
was designated as the International Day of Peace. Um, it is a day devoted to strengthening the ideals of peace through an observation of a 24 hour period of nonviolence and ceasefire. Um, helping find peace that way seems very overwhelming to an individual. Um, how do we um, at any point make any difference? But I do think there are practical things that can bring peace to others' lives and we can do that and we have. As a world church, we have always proclaimed peace. Our church seal states that clearly. Um, in more recent times, we have claimed to be the peace church um, loud and boldly. Um, we have created a peace pavilion for children to go and learn in hands-on opportunities um, how to bring peace to others. Our obligation, our oblation funds have been sent at times to disaster areas to provide shelter, food, safety, all bring peace. As a congregation, we have been helping bring peace by our giving to the Center of Hope. Think of the peace it brings someone to know that they have another meal tomorrow or a blanket to keep them warm. We have been giving monies to the medical mission down in Honduras. Think of the peace that brings someone there to know they have medicine to heal a wound or an illness so that they will be able to return to work and feed and provide shelter for their family. Individually, I know many are giving their time, their talent and their monies to bring peace and comfort to others in the Kansas City area. Let, let us continue to reach out and find ways to bring peace in our community. And let us now pray for understanding of new directions for us to reach out to others and bring peace in their lives and our world. Will you bow with me? God, from large to small, from the creation of our universe to the wonders of our DNA, your mighty acts astound us. They incite us to praise. They also call us to challenge us in similar boldness to seek and give peace. We live in a society that so often turns to violence to cover weaknesses and ideas and the futility of influence. Give us the Holy Spirit to empower our efforts for peace. We would act boldly in our quest for your peaceful kingdom. This is our prayer. Amen.
the disciples' generous response and Nadine's beautiful um, message about peace, I think all go together and are helping. Um, we know that as givers, our generosity changes people's lives and brings joy as a Christian mission is realized. Together, the abundance of our collective capacity as a community of Christ can provide all the resources needed to bring changed people, changed communities, and a changed world. God's vision of the future, the peaceful reign of God on earth, is the driving vision for our generosity. We give for a future that God tells us we are poised to fulfill. Generosity that fulfills our whole life is what brings that future into being and makes us the people we are called to be. During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our heart with God's heart. Our offerings are more than meeting budgets or funding missions. Through our offerings, we are able to tangibly express our gratitude to God, who is the giver of all. As we share our mission ties, we use this time to thank God for the many gifts received in life. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gratefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. Will you pray with me, please? Dear Father, we are so thankful that we are able to give. We realize it is the blessings that you bestow upon us that enable us to turn around and give from our resources to those in need. So Father, we pray as we each send our checks or do our e-tithing that you will bless us and that more importantly, you will bless the monies and the ways that those monies are used to help those in need. We would pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. <clears throat> Today's theme is act boldly. One of the scripture uh, choices that were listed in the um, worship helps was a scripture that I've enjoyed for since it was published. And I don't remember when, but it's been some time ago. It's from Doctrine and Covenants, section 151, verse 9. You, are, you who are my disciples must be found continuing in the forefront of those organizations and movements which are recognizing the worth of persons and are committed to bringing the ministry of my son to bear on their lives. The past few months have been a challenge for us to watch what has been happening worldwide with the abuse of people around the world. We are not sure what has happened. The TV news shows us events from around the world, but most channels say the same things, sometimes word for word. Who writes these scripts? What is the real truth behind what we see and hear? There also seems to be a lot of spin on what is shown and what is said. Sometimes the spin is one way, other times it spins another. The truth is there's a lot of confusion as to what is happening and what the real truth is on any subject you want to pick. And then there are the, is the backstory. I think more things are happening in the backstory than in what is being said and what is being shown. There are cover-ups and people that are not telling the truth about what is happening. As the saying goes, people lie and people die. So where do we fit in this picture of being in the forefront of organizations and movements that are recognizing the worth of persons? There are many organizations and movements that can be a part uh, that we can be a part of. Perhaps the name of the organization may sound okay, but their actions may be something else. Names can sound harmless, 
But when the truth is known about an organization or movement, we find that the name and their actions contradict each other. It's a game of wordsmithing. Many people are drawn to organizations that turn out to be the opposite of what their name implies. A few years ago, there was a movie, A Few Good Men. In the movie, A Few Good Men, Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholas, Nicholson are in a military courtroom in a, in a court martial scene in which Jack, Marshall, Jack Nicholson is on the witness stand testifying uh, about an incident that because of an order he had given resulted in the death of a soldier in a combat situation. Tom Cruise is a military JAG officer, prosecuting attorney, and is trying to find out what really happened and if Jack Nicholson gave an order that cost the life of the soldier in question. The question goes on for a while and begins to get somewhat heated. Tom Cruise makes a statement that all he wants is the truth. Nicholson fires back a response that in part is, you want the truth? You can't stand the truth. The rest of the Nicholson response to Cruz is that the JAG officer behind the desk in Washington, as a JAG officer behind a desk in Washington, DC, he has no idea the real or true picture of the events and circumstances that lead to, led to the decision that was made, which may have cost the life of a soldier. Nor does he know if the soldier carried out the order as given. He is making a claim that he cannot back up. That is true with so many things that we see and hear that we are going that are going on in the world. What is the backstory? It may be a completely different story than what has been presented. Look over here. There's nothing to see over there. Right. We may need to do more research to find the true depth of the truth. More times than not, the truth is being hidden and kept from us, maybe accidentally and maybe intentionally. Perhaps the people involved don't think it's important or necessary that everyone knows the details. They feign security reasons. Security of what? To shield those that perhaps made bad choices or made decisions that were not really in the best interest of everyone involved. And why is this story out of the darkness anyway? Does it really need to know? Do we really need to know about this story? Then, that's, then is when the plot thickens and the story goes from light to gray to darkness. So it is with what the news media feeds the public daily as to what is really happening in the world. When I was writing that sentence, I started to say in our world, but our world and the real world may be two different, completely different things. This has become even more true in the recent years, especially in recent months. Life is getting murkier as the days go by. The truth is fading. I believe that some of those things have been kept hidden will be known. I believe there is a major war going on behind the scenes that the news media is not reporting. In fact, Maybe the news media doesn't, isn't even aware of what is happening. In some ways, that may be the best for us, the ordinary citizens. So Jack Nicholson's response to Tom Cruise may now fit in the ways we perceive the world. Even though we may want the truth, if we really knew the truth, we may not be able to handle the truth. If nothing else, it would raise even more questions and uncover more hidden truths than we can comprehend. There always remains the question of why? Look over here because there's nothing to see over there. What about all the refugees? Who is concerned about the worth of those persons? The human slavery. We are told there are some drugs that are crossing the border. True, there are drugs crossing the border. What about the trafficking of human lives? Worldwide, nearly 1 million children disappear every year. Remember the days when there were pictures on milk cartons? There aren't enough people drinking milk to cover all the missing children. More money is made with human trafficking 
than selling guns and drugs put together. Where's the news about that? Look over here, because there's nothing to see over there. It is difficult to imagine the amount of evil there is in the world. Not your misdemeanor sin, but pure evil. Franklin Roosevelt said, there is nothing to fear, but fear itself. Think about the past several months and all that has happened. For our whole life, the idea of the boogeyman has been one thing after another. I'm a baby boomer, which means I was born after World War II. After the turn of the past century, there was World War I, and near the end of the war, there was the Spanish flu of 1918 and 1919. The first case of the Spanish flu was actually discovered in Kansas at Fort Riley. But then there was the media censorship. Spain was a neutral country and had free press. So since the news of the influenza was coming out of Spain and no one else was reporting it, Spain got credit for starting what became a pandemic, Spanish flu. Then the great stock market crash and the depression. During the 30s and 40s, the boogeyman was the Nazis and then Pearl Harbor happened. So then the focus changed somewhat. After that, the Korean conflict, which was another war but this time it was against communism. Since then, communism has been the underlying fear that have, we have lived with and still is the backup boogeyman when there's nothing else. It's interesting that we still have almost 30,000 US troops that are occupying South Korea. Then there was the Cold War, Cold War and the space race. The space race wasn't a war with soldiers shooting at each other, but it was a competition that kept us distracted. Then, the, then Vietnam, and after that, the wars in the Middle East. It's always been something to keep the great war machine churning to create more powerful ways to, for, us to kill each, for us to kill each other. The past administration was trying to get us out of wars. The current administration got us out of one, well, sort of. We more or less escape the Middle East because there is a much bigger boogeyman. It is not just in the U.S. It's worldwide boogeyman. It's a bug. So the elites have another way to entertain themselves. They needed something to keep the common man in fear. They have always had to have a boogeyman to keep our lives in suspense under the guise of protecting us from the boogeyman. The evil continues. The more recent fear is the virus, but when you get to an experimental shot, you, you can save yourself. Well, maybe. You may need a booster. Perhaps it's time to research the Nuremberg Code. Ronald Reagan cautioned us to be aware of these simple words. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Right. The interesting thing is when the government shows up to help, it always costs us more money. Funny how that works. Remember, look over here because there's nothing to see over there. What would they have us do next to chase our tails? When God created man in his own image, he blessed us with several gifts. One gift is a mind we have that is far superior to other animals. Within that mind reside several things. Some are stronger in some of us than others. One thing is common sense. Another thing that God gave us is a thing we called conscious. Remember Jiminy Cricket? I think God gave us those two things to protect us from getting caught up in the temptations of the world. Some of us depend on those two things in our lives more than others. Another thing I think that women have that men may not have is intuition. If men have it, it may not be as pronounced as it appears to be on the feminine side. Men may refer to it as an internal force, as a gut feeling. Whatever the case, it serves us well and protects us from things around us. When God created mankind, he made man in his own image. I remember a few years ago, there was a saying going around, God does not make junk. Well, I think that's very true. Why would God allow something evil to destroy us? 
either through a disease or some boogeyman thing that was made up to put fear in us. I think Satan, I think Satan and those that worship Satan, yes, there are some that worship Satan. They live to create things that challenge mankind to keep us in fear. We need to put our trust in God. Why would God want us to live in fear? God wants us to be in peace. And in peace, we must have peace in our heart, within our soul. If we are confused or we are fearful of things in our life, we need to stop and pray. Ask God to give us discernment, wisdom, and understanding. God will never allow us to harm ourselves if we first ask him for wisdom. Now, if we listen to the loud voices, it is impossible that we may hear something and it may be, not be true. Remember, Joseph Smith read the scripture in James, the first chapter, the fifth verse. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and braideth not, and it shall be given to him. So we have to ask ourselves, do we lack wisdom? Do we have wisdom in our lives or we just think we do? Or do we listen to some loud voice crying wolf? I suggest we stop running around like chickens with our heads cut off and drop to our knees and pray. Ask God for wisdom in our life. God will grant that wisdom. Perhaps he is giving us information in that still small voice we heard about. But maybe it, it just, but maybe, just maybe the loud voice of the boogeyman is drowning out the voice of reason that God is sharing with us. Too often we think we have all the answers when perhaps we don't have the correct answer. We don't have the truth. In my work, it's the details that make the difference in the outcome of a project. When we are complimented on the quality of our work, we say the devil is in the details. When Karen is making a quilt, it's the details of her work that make a difference in how her quilt looks when she has completed the quilt. If the seams are not straight or the colors don't complement each other, the bad details or mistakes jump out at you when you look at the finished product. The same thing is true in life. If we don't have the fine details worked out correctly, then things can go astray. We can be misdirected. God will give us wisdom liberally. He won't hold back. Are we ready to know the truth? Are we able to listen to that still small voice? We must ask first. Not in a half-hearted way, but in a sincere, heartfelt desire to know what God wants us to know and to do. As Latter-day Saints, we have perhaps have the idea that we are in the latter days before the return of Christ. And maybe that's true. We seem to be waiting for Christ to come and rescue us from this crazy world. Every day I wonder what strange and crazy thing might happen today. How can things get more crazy? The world seems to get stranger as the time passes. As we review the world in the past several months, we need to ask ourselves, am I on the right side of history? Is my faith strong? Do I stand for the worth of persons? Are we committed to bringing the ministry of Jesus Christ to bear in the lives of others? As your pastor, I have concerns about the direction we are going as a congregation and as a world church. Do we recognize the truth? Do we see the evil that is trying to divide us as a nation and as humanity? A few days ago, I saw a sign that I thought perhaps fit this time. It read, you can pray all you want, but eventually David had to pick up a stone and act against Goliath. I'm not suggesting we pick up stones and throw them at people. What I am saying is we need to follow the words of our mission prayer, which is, God, where will your spirit lead today? Help me to be fully awake and ready to respond. Grant me courage to risk something new and become a blessing of your love and peace. Act boldly and listen to your heart and follow your intuition and use common sense to face the forces of evil that surround us. 
Pray that God might grant you wisdom in your life and direct you in the ways he would have you go, that you might have the courage to stand for truth and justice. Remember, you must ask for wisdom, and he will grant it to you liberally and not withholding. Be sure to thank God for the blessings in your life. You were put here in this place in this time for a reason. Don't waste one moment. Serve the God that loves you and is depending on you to be on the right side of history. Pray for those that are fighting, fighting where you cannot go. Pray for all those souls that are lost or in captivity and can't find peace in their life. We are the blessed ones. Live the commitment you made to God. Find the courage to stand up for truth and justice. Live boldly. May God continue to bless you as you find his wisdom in your life. Will you pray with me? Our dear Father in heaven, we would pray that you might bless us this day as we move forward, as we think about acting boldly, that we not be afraid, Father, to share your message to the world. Father, help us that we might act boldly to reach out to those around us who need your spirit, need your help. Help us to know, Father, ways that we might be of service to others. We pray a blessing upon this day in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>